Welcome back, and today uh, we're going to be talking about timed message boxes, which is a request I've got quite a lot. So everyone knows the basic message box function, so we know this, but there's actually another message box function that is very similar to this and it has all of the same properties, except it is timed. So it uses the wscript.shell. So let's set that up real quick. All right, so now that our wscript.shell is shut up, we use our shell and do a pop-up. So object shell dot pop-up. And it has very similar uh, sections. You'll see here on the little uh, things what goes where. Um, but the first one is your message. The second one is how many seconds you want it to be displayed as. So let's say three seconds. The next one is your title. And then the final one is your type of box. And these are all the same types as a message box can do. So we can do OK only as well right here. And all it will display is an OK button. So let's run these. You'll notice here is your message box. And here is your pop-up. Notice they look exactly the same. And of course, the pop-up, as you saw, went away in three seconds, even if I didn't press anything. So you'll notice my mouse is over here. And it goes away just like that and you can change this to however long you want let's say five seconds five seconds like this if you don't want a title just like your message box you just a minute um, but keep your commas there and then of course okay cancel we can change all the types plus add question marks anything you would on your message box so we start this here's our message box notice everything's the same um, just like that if we admit the the title you'll see what it showed there is just the host and if you just want it blank just do that just like that so now we can run it again and now we have a blank title so that is how to do that now you might be asking well what about feedback well it works the same as a message box let's delete this set it up to something so let's say this whole thing equals x and then of course let's wrap it in our parentheses and then use it just like before with our if statements or whatever else you want to use and say if x equals vp okay all right so now we have options for all three let's hit start and if we click cancel it will say the cancel part of the script if we click okay it will say the okay part and if we just wait it out it will obviously disappear in five seconds and it will terminate just like you see here well what if we wanted live feedback, like to say five, four, three, two, one, etc. You can't exactly do this with this, but there is a workaround where you can just create instances of this pop-up for each second. So let me show you that. Let's X out of this real quick. So that's the simple way to do it is using the pop-up, but I do have a workaround, like I said, to display it for each second. So as you see here, we set the same things up so right here. This equals five seconds. So the five, you can change this number to anything you want. Now, once we go into our for next loop, we start at I, which is just a variable to keep track of things, to keep track of the loops. And we start that at one and go up to five. So that's going to be five exact seconds. So again, the pop-up can say whatever you want. This will last four. And then you can put this in anywhere you want. But what this is going to do is update uh, which one it is because this in starts at five so this is first going to display as a five and then as you see down here we're going to subtract one so the next time around this in will display as a four so this will just let us see it happening our pop-up now is going to be one second because each pop-up we want to last for one second so the first one we check to see if we click yes if we do click yes on any of these pop-ups then we'll exit our for loop if we click no on any of them, then we'll exit it uh, there as well. Because remember, we're going to be creating five total pop-ups, actually. It's not one. It's actually five total. So as soon as we click yes on one of those, we want to exit our for loop. Down here, if we reach zero, then we want to say you didn't click anything. So let's run this. So note, now you'll see that it goes down just like that. And there obviously is a little blink, as you see. And that's because it's creating different message boxes each time so it's kind of a cheap workaround but it looks decently nice you can still click stuff and have it stop the loop whenever you want and move on in your script 
All right, so that's my simple workaround to have it lively say so. Another option if you don't want anything, like you don't want any buttons or anything to click, you just want a message to display, right? So in that case, we're gonna use HTA. And I'm not gonna get too fancy with this because this is another coding language that some of y'all won't know. And I don't wanna confuse you too much. But basically, we're just setting an HTA box to display a message as you see here. This is going to be for three seconds, and this is going to be the message within the HTML body. So if we start this, notice this, it just says it will display for three seconds. And as you see, there's no options to click. This is just a message that will pop up on the screen that we don't necessarily want the user to click away from or do anything with. It's more of an information thing. So what I did was convert this small script into a vscript file. As you see here, so here is the whole script converted into a vscript file, except for the time, we have our own variable. So this will let us choose what time, and we also have our own message we can put within each one. So up here to run this, what we do is type out our function. Now you'll notice we'll get message, time, and title that we can set up right here. So let's go ahead and put a message. So, and this is in milliseconds as well, just like your sleep function. So, 4,000 is going to be 4 seconds. This will be 4.5, etc. Um, this will be 100 milliseconds, or a tenth of a second. So, let's go ahead and do 4 seconds. And let's have our title. All of this function gets to be decreased into just this little bit, and you can display it anywhere in your code. Just set this whole section aside in your code somewhere, and whenever you want to use your timed box, that's all you have to put, and then you can type out whatever other message you want, wherever you want in your script. So let's start this one, and you'll notice it'll just display whatever information you need, and in four seconds will go away. Hope this gave you all the basics of what you need to create timed message boxes in vscript. I will have all these codes in the description for you all to copy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.